My professor emailed her class of 30 students that 6 of them had plagiarized and if they replied and confessed they would get a second chance. She got 19 emails back. What other weird cause and effect situations have you seen? In Oslo, Norway there is nothing stopping you from just entering a bus or tram without a ticket. There is, however, frequent ticket controls. So one day on the bus from work, the driver announced over the speakers that since it was Christmas and all she would like to advise us about a ticket control on the end of station 3 stops ahead. About half the passengers rushed off on the next station. As she started driving again she announced that there in fact was no control and thanked the rest of us for paying for tickets. In Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, you can get on some buses through the back doors if it's busy and just ride to where you need to go. However, they also had transit police. If you get on a bus, pay, but don't get a transfer, they will ticket you for not paying the fare. They also don't, or didn't, listen to bus drivers when they say that the person did pay. Needed a day off work so I claimed I had food poisoning from the dinner I ate with colleagues the night before. So the lie didn't backfire I had to stick with the story and told the same thing to whoever asked, including those colleagues. When I emailed work saying why I wasn't in, just under half the people I ate with claimed to be feeling unwell that day too and agreed we should never revisit that restaurant. Two of them even went home that afternoon due to ill stomachs. There was nothing wrong with me or the food. Either your colleagues know how to effectively bandwagon, or your lie was so good it caused a placebo effect. In Japan, 30 squirrels escape the zoo after a storm. In an effort to retrieve the missing squirrels, they set up traps to capture the squirrels. Later on the headlines. Huge success. 38 squirrels out of 30 missing were captured. This reminds me of a Norwegian joke about Swedes. The headline of a Swedish newspaper. Small plane crashes in cemetery. 200 bodies recovered so far. When I lived in a dorm at college, someone pulled the fire alarm as a prank on his roommate who was having sex with his girlfriend. The fire team, obligated to come out and check the building, found an unexpected situation on their hands when they arrived. The RA for each floor would enter the building with an officer and check all the rooms. On the floor above me, they found a girl who had overdosed on medication in an apparent suicide attempt seizing in her bathroom. She was rushed to the hospital and they saved her life. She didn't end up returning to school, but her parents were so grateful that they rewarded the student who pulled the prank the $500 he was fined for falsely pulling the alarm. We all knew it was a prank and were joking with a guy and his roommate and girlfriend outside. It was terrifying when a legitimate emergency was uncovered. Wow that is incredibly fortunate. Brother-in-law went to purchase beer from local store, finds a case of beer and brings it to the counter. He's young looking, so they card him. The cashier hands back the card, and tells him the total, 27. My brother-in-law responds no, 25, the cashier changes the price to $25. My brother-in-law accidentally thought the cashier was asking his age, and corrected him. And the cashier thought my brother-in-law was correcting the price. He said it with such confidence that the cashier gave him the discount without another word. D. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle once anonymously telegrammed a bunch of his friends we are discovered. Flee at once. Several of them disappeared abroad overnight. Citation needed, but dear god let this be true. When I was 15 or 16 I kept a pee magazine under my mattress. My mom decided to wash my bedding. I came home from football practice and my bedding was all washed. I instantly froze. I was the innocent type and didn't know what to do. Went into the living room and sat for what seemed like a silent eternity watching TV with my mom thinking the whole time. Oh gosh she knows. Oh gosh she knows. I eventually decided to confess. She told me to go outside until she found a suitable punishment. During this thinking time of hers, she called her best friend and told her I confessed to having a dirty magazine. The friend's response least you know he's not gay. Come to find out, my mom knew nothing about the magazine. She, some freaking how, missed it entirely while changing my bedding. I confessed for nothing. Lesson learned, play dumb as long as possible. TL, DR, confessed to having a pee mag under my mattress after mom laundered my bedding. Mom didn't know till after my admission. Upvoting for being very possibly the only one who accurately responded to the question posed. 
One day in high school our teacher got sick, so they sent a substitute. It was hard not to notice that he had a giant squint. One moment, he stopped lecturing and said, you, throw out the chewing gum. Four students stood up to do it. An ex-boss of mine was a key player in the implementation of etch deposits for paychecks at Westinghouse back in the mid 80s. The morning this new and exciting payroll perk was announced, he had dozens of distraught Westinghouse old timers lined up outside his office. It seems these men had all worked at Westinghouse for decades and never told their wives they ever got a raise, or at least very much downplayed their year over year salary bumps. Sheer panic had set in. I'm so very late to the party but fun story about plagiarism. My high school English teacher was convinced this girl had plagiarized, but couldn't prove it. As a result she contacted a couple of the colleges this girl was applying to and told them she had plagiarized. Fast forward to two weeks. The teacher is giving us an assignment with a sample paper that had earned her an A when she was in college. A couple girls entered it into the reverse search and found out the teacher had plagiarized the paper in the first place. We went to the principal and she had to confess to all of the students, she cried and cried. It was one of the only times I've ever felt good about seeing someone cry. God, I hated that B. In middle school, there was a substitute for English one day. As soon as he walks in, he tells everyone to get back to their own seats, as students tend to get away with sitting with their friends when there's a sub. About half the class stood up and started to move back to their seats. While muttering how did he know I fassa palmed right there, considering there wasn't even a copy of the seating plan for the sub to have. Oh, frick, I am terrified of accidental plagiarism. I had a professor accuse me of plagiarism because, she claimed, my writing was too good to be my own. I don't even know. Dudes, I feel like my academic writing is stilted and uncomfortable. The weird thing was that she was only allowing us to use the two texts assigned for class sources. And she told us not to bother citing them since she knew what we all were using. Her syllabus said that if accused of plagiarism, the accused had to disprove it, and that's pretty impossible. I had followed her rules, nothing outside the texts and my own analysis. I argued my way up to a C when I offered to write a new essay in a practical environment and she didn't care enough to bother, but the whole thing was really upsetting. Ugh. Freaking hate academia. Now I cite the ever-loving frick out of everything and go out of my way not to have original ideas outside of in-class exams. It's depressing as crap. A girl I was sleeping with told me she was pregnant with my baby. I told her I was infertile, I'm not, so it couldn't be mine. She admitted she was sleeping with a couple of other guys too and it turns out she wasn't actually pregnant. She was just trying to trap someone. I saw her at the mall a year later with what I assumed to be one of the other guys and a newborn. Poor sap. I called in sick to work when I was in high school, and the next time I saw my manager, she had called off for like 3 days, blaming me for making her ill. I was faking. All my symptoms were made up. Already mentioned in some other thread but here goes. In high school we had some bogus programming design class. I don't remember the crappy software we used but Visual Basic was a huge step up compared to it. Anyway there was a bug in the application that if you set a page to read only and included an animation to switch over to the next page, that page was no longer modifiable since it would always switch to the next page automatically. A few of my friends used this bug feature to insert copyrights into our projects so they wouldn't be stolen by kids from other classes that used the same computers. At the end of the year the teacher confirmed that every once in a while some idiot wouldn't bother to check the program he was stealing and would submit a program with a copyright in it. I even saw one of my dumber friend get caught because of this. Good times. That reminded me of a day in my 7th grade English class. Someone made an envelope out of a page of paper, rotate one on it, and put sticks of gum in it. It was passed around to the entire class. The teacher saw a person or two chewing gum, and said something to the effect of you guys know it's against school policy. Throw the gum out now and avoid trouble. The entire class gets up and tosses out their gum. The teacher was very surprised. The look on her face was priceless. GG student. He does have enough for all the class. So one day many years ago, I'm sitting down at dinner with the rest of my family when the phone rings. My dad casually answers the phone with a hello, sergeant and glares at my brother. Now, my dad is an EMT in town, 
and he's very friendly with most of the local police and fire ambulance volunteers. My newly 18 brother upon hearing my dad answer the phone turns to my mom and says, Mom, I'm really sorry but last night I got pulled over and got a speeding ticket. A moment after this my dad hangs up the phone and explains it was just an army recruiter looking to get in touch with my brother. My mom explains to my dad what just happened. Many laughs were had and my brother had his license taken away for a bit. 7th grade. Faked sick to stay home from school and my mom gave my some Advil. Turns out I had developed an allergy to Advil and any ibuprofen and my face throat swelled up. My mom was out and couldn't make it home. So my neighbor had to take me to the hospital to get a Benadryl shot. That was nice. Karma for faking sick. Maybe. Did I do it again during high school? You betcha. Last year I was in my chemical reactions class. Chemical reactor kinetics and design. And our prof was the academic integrity officer. He comes in one day. Talking about how half the class clearly plagiarized the last assignment. So far that they all looked identical in procedure and layout. Then he said if you are going to cheat, at least do it well and launched in at a lecture about academic dishonesty. Meanwhile, I was sitting in the back, saying to myself ha, huh, I didn't plagiarize anything, I didn't even do that assignment. As you may be able to imagine, I'm taking chemical reactions again this year. You sure showed him. One day years ago I was sitting down studying when my mother came into the room looking somber and serious told me she had to talk to me and if I knew what it was about. I furiously went through everything I bad I had done in the past month and eventually came up with smoking. Me. Is it about smoking? Ma'am. What about it? Do you smoke? Me. Yeah but not many. 10-12 every week. Ma'am. Okay. Well what are you doing about it? Me. Well I'm trying to stop so I'm cutting down. Ma'am. Good because it's incredibly bad for you yada yada yada. Me. I know. I'll stop now and won't smoke again. Hugs all around. Ma'am. That's not why I'm here though. Me in my head foo went on to talk to me about suicide and how a neighbor's BF killed himself and if I had any questions or felt down then I should talk to either parent about it. I was sitting at my desk with my head in the clouds not having heard anything about the neighbor's situation at all. That is why you never confess to anything until directly confronted with evidence. I was accused of plagiarism on coding once because I took much time on the programs we had to give, trying things and failing a lot until it finally worked, but I sucked at TRIC tests because I didn't understand the concepts and correct terms, and to be honest I focused way more on coding than theory, so he told me there was no way I could have made those programs, in class with everyone, without understanding the theory, explained myself, he kept his statement, he didn't fail me barely passed final exam, but guess he still thinks I plagiarized those programs. I know that feeling. For my independent research class, the professor allowed the class to submit the papers to Turnitin.com as many times as necessary to avoid any plagiarism. Since accidental citation errors were still considered plagiarism, I was utterly paranoid that I submitted my paper over half a dozen times. Still did not help my paranoia however. This is interesting cause my story actually involves the Berlin Zoo. When I was studying abroad in Berlin, my friend had this huge party while his host parents were away. The next day we had all planned to go to the zoo. While we were there he told us how he had left a note to his host mom apologizing for the party and the huge hole that had burned through the coffee table. That's when we informed him that the hole had been there before the party. He tried to beat her home but couldn't. I went to high school during the 90s, the early days of the internet. They had a block placed on the computers that was easy to disable. Heck my English teacher showed me how. I promptly disabled it and looked at a bunch of pee in the computer lab. A couple days later an announcement came over the intercom for me to go to the superintendent's office. I was sweating bullets and ready to confess when he pulled out a sheet of paper and showed me a screen capture of me. Trying to create a hotmail account during school hours, which I guess was also an offense. He asked me why I disabled the blocker and I said I just like the challenge. All the while thinking, I just like the pee. They probably also saw the pee but were just fricking with you and letting you know they're onto you. Seriously, what the heck is with that TL? DR? It's erotic.
I can't believe I had to go this far down to find this comment. This was the only reason I was here, to make sure I wasn't crazy. Ended up reading a ton of lame stories. FML. I once gave a presentation at university and afterwards my professor told me it was great but I plagiarized it. I didn't. I even made all the photos by myself. I was really upset because I really put some work into it to be good. He insisted that I did but wouldn't let me see any proof so he had to let me pass. I still don't know what was wrong and why he would think that. Besides that one thing he was actually a pretty good professor. This was the worst thing for me that one of the few good ones actually thought I would do something like this. That sounds pretty dumb if I were you and knew 100% I didn't cheat he'd argue with him till he regretted making a false claim. I think this is a great example of game theory, that is for both the plagiarizers and the trade off that they make, and the non plagiarizers in the thinking. Well I may not have plagiarized, but I can't be absolutely sure that I didn't, so dropping one grade is better than getting kicked out of college. The plagiarizing student that turned down the offer presumably took his chances at getting away with it all and faced the most severe punishment as a result. Maybe I am barking up the wrong tree but regardless this is an interesting scenario. I hated school and middle school, and as such, would frequently fake sick to get out of it. I did it so often I eventually ran out of ailments to fake. One day I rubbed a red lipstick and splotchy bits all over my face and told my mom I had a rash. She then immediately took me to the dermatologist. I was crapping bricks in the waiting room waiting to be uncovered as a fraud. When the doctor eventually saw me I was so nervous I wanted to cry. He then took a look at my face, nodded his head, and prescribed a topical cream. TL. DR. Those stretch marks eventually turn pearly white and when they wrap around a beautiful, warm, tang thigh they almost look like lightning bolts and I think it is incredibly sexy and I want a kiss from your knees to your hips. TC. WTF. I too would like to know about the TL. DR. I got pulled over in a parking lot for reckless driving when I was 17 or 18. I received an ultimatum from the officer after getting screamed at. I would either be written a ticket or the cop himself would come to my house and talk to my parents about my driving. I chose going without a ticket, since I'd already gotten one or two before then. I knew I'd be in worse trouble if I didn't confess. I called my mom and told her, which resulted in a severe punishment. Turns out my parents already had plans that night so they didn't even get home until late. I still don't know if that cop showed up. However my friend saw an officer leave the development. TL. DR. Ratted myself out for reckless driving to my parents before the police officer did. Parents never came home. Mike I have passed by your workstation multiple times without you realizing it and noticed you have been on reddit practically all day so far. Will you please come see me in my office now? In a final year university class, the professor withheld marks because he thought a bunch of students cheated. I began to get quite a bit worried, as technically I did not break the rules, but did discuss the assignment with close friends leading to us coming down to 3-4 similar issues. Turns out, the cheating was because some students had the solutions to the assignment and I had done nothing wrong. However, if an email like the ARPS went out before I would have probably sent an email back just to be on the safe side. My dad worked at a lab in Germany for a year during college and helped write an article for some German science journal. When he later got back to the US, he took a course for medical terminology in German for some easy credit. On the final they had to translate some articles from abroad. One of the articles was the one my dad co-authored. Hum. I think it would be because you are always using other sources and there's always a chance you did not source or incorporate them properly. People probably got really nervous and thought it might be them. I know I am always nervous. Hum. Not a really interesting one but I noticed that when a group of people have an idea to do something but are too lazy to get up, all you need is one person to start walking away. It's a miracle. What I do is cite absolutely everything I say. Everything. This happened about a decade ago, hanging with friends around a bonfire when I drunkenly decide to be jealous and obnoxious towards my BF of that time. We get into a huge fight BC I'm being really jealous about one of his co-workers and will not back down from my argument that he should not have her phone number in his contact book. Oh young stupid love. Well, I storm off into the woods cursing, 
he is following, while everyone else is by the fire drinking. In the middle of him trying to console me, we hear a loud pop sound and people screaming, panicking. We run back to the fire and some people are screaming. Some are crying and some are just looking dumbfounded. Turns out, one of the guys put a huge branch on top of the fire and was standing and then jumping on this branch to break it. Well, it broke. He fell into the fire and covered everyone with hot coal and molten plastic. From his clothes, everyone around the fire was burned in some way or another, and he was covered in first and second degree burns on his back and legs. My sister had burns all the way up the front of her legs to her lower thigh and her left foot has a scar where a coal must have set and burned her. Pretty much everyone at the party was burned besides my boyfriend and myself. TLDR. My drunken jealousy saved me and my boyfriend from possibly getting burned during a party. Comma she received 19 emails back of people confessing, most of which were never even guilty of plagiarism in the first place. Do you mean that most of them would have gotten away with it? Or do you mean that people confessed when they hadn't even done anything? I'm pretty sure it's the former, but it reads like the latter. Late in the thread, but whatever. In the second year of my bachelor's we had a rather long report to do on the subject of our choice, within context of the class. OFC. About a day after they handed it, the prof emails the whole class that two people were caught plagiarizing and would be dealt with by the university. The whole class was 20 people. I knew it wasn't me, but I thought I might have done so not on purpose. I freaked the frick out and poured over my paper for 3 hours straight. Nothing. That was the most scared I've ever been while at university. So what I'm saying is I can easily imagine a lot of people freaking out over an email like that. Dang. Ugh. A student in my junior high math class consistently copied his math homework from the solutions in the back of the book. He was found out when one of his answers began. Answers may vary. An example is given. In high school I was a clown. I was also a straight-A student who didn't have to pay attention to do well in class. This has not paid off well for me. I'm lazy as heck. I had a particular math class where the teacher didn't want us to turn in most of our assignments as we went but would actually collect portfolios of our work at the end of each several weeks. Well when I turned in my portfolio which was complete, all correct, he told me to stay after class. He told me that he didn't think I had done the work myself and had copied from my friends. In fact they had copied a few assignments here and there from me because it was so friggin easy for me it didn't occur to me to care. He had no proof. Had nothing to back it up and I fought it. I got an A in that class. And the worst part until that moment he was one of my fab teachers. I don't really think you can blame him for that. He saw that you had a paper which was copied from multiple sources. That probably looked suspicious. It's more likely that one student copied from multiple peers than that multiple peers copied from one student. Or he just assumed that, if you want to say that that's false. In college, in a tough system dynamics class or 30 students our teacher gave us a difficult problem from the textbook for homework. Naturally everybody tried it for 5 minutes and then looked to the internet for answers. Well one student found the actual textbook with answers online and shared it with about half the class. The A grading the HW found out because half the class copied 1 plus 1 equals 3 straight from the answer key which was obviously wrong. Comma she received 19 emails back of people confessing, most of which were never even guilty of plagiarism in the first place. I expect most or all of those 19 did plagiarize, but just not full plagiarisms. Like, the 6 were probably overt copies, but the other 13 probably had various amounts of unsighted analysis yanked from other authors, etc. I was in a college class that was similar to this. Maybe 20 students? Teacher announced that 3 people had turned in basically the exact same thing. He didn't know if all 3 had copied from somewhere or if 2 had copied from the original writer, but said he knew who they were and if they came forward, in front of the rest of the class, that he wouldn't fail them automatically, $1500 class, and wouldn't report them to the dean of their department, instead just giving them a zero on that particular assignment. 2 fessed up. The third didn't. Don't think he wound up graduating. This was 3 stroke 4 the way through a bachelor's program. I was playing video games in the back of my world history class in 10th grade. I hear the teacher call my name. So I walk up and hand them my DS. 
They were asking me for field trip money I said I'd bring that day. We just had a staring contest for a minute before I said wait crap, here's the money. I once worked for a single owner business where the owner was a complete butt. That wasn't too bad. I didn't mind him being a total jerk. He'd often make fun of people and I'd laugh with him. But then he screwed me on a commissions check. He said that since he was the guy who introduced me to the client I didn't deserve the commission. So I started stealing from him. From him not the business. He was the kind of guy that kept a ton of personal crap at work. So I started taking a cigar or three here, a bottle of booze there. He'd catch it and get pee off and would rant at me and then be a bigger dong to everyone. Then, one time, he was a total butt and was threatening to dock everyone's pay for it. That night I took it all. All his booze, all his cigars, his diamond watch, a 1911 with two mags he had in his desk, and more crap I can't remember. I think I even took the roll away desk and the his chair as well as the video camera he has on his bookshelf to film his room. Next day he sends out a notice to everyone that he knows who had been stealing from the company. He had film, and if they would come forward he'd not have them arrested. Half the office confessed to stealing from the business. So he bluffed and caught one half the office. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.